is a set of natural laws. Wow, this is false because it's assignment three. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I said that what is the goal of assignment three? By the time the semester start, okay. Wait a sec. I don't have iPhone. Okay now. Okay. So my goal is to write a write an extension for the automatic form filler. Okay, I want to fill fill in the form of a uh, of uh, the reserve. Okay, the reserve page of an iPhone automatically so that I can uh, I can be as fast as possible faster than those ports. Okay, of course our assignment is not that complete, huh? Okay. Now what what is the purpose of having an extension? Okay, now let's do, a, let's do a simple survey. I just point a several gaps, okay? What, is, what are the what are okay? What are, what are the most favorite extensions that you use? Ah? Block. Okay. Any others? Hmm? Cola. Cola. What is that? This is a proxy. Proxy. Oh, proxy changer. Okay, good, 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 very good. Uh, Any others? Just for different types of extension. Only Chrome extension only. Oh, whatever, whatever. Uh, Chrome extension only. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now think about it, the set of things that you guys talk about. Some of it is a within the setting. I quickly change the network setting so that you can apply proxy setting. Some others is to change the behavior of page, like the win win pop in, like the back block, right? You apply changes to pages. Now think about it, it seems to be very powerful. It can change whatever page you want. You can change the execution environment of your browser. So teaching this is very important, right? Now, to tell you a little secret, the little secret is writing Chrome extension is, uh, is writing JavaScript, okay? They are JavaScript. And if by default, it's open source, okay? Later, I can, I can guide you guys to take it, okay? So if you have a notebook computer here, yeah, put it up. I know, I tell you how to find the extensions. Okay? So uh although we don't we don't touch the Firefox extension because Firefox extension is not for human to write, okay? I my my first okay when I first come here I I need my first FYP team. Okay? That guy is writing a Firefox extension. And after this I know that I cannot afford to say Say it again to write a file extension for FRP. Too hard, too hard. Okay. Uh, why is this too hard? Because file extension is having a very bad documentation. That's all. Okay. And file extension. Why I want to mention it because I can contrast what is a uh, Chrome extension. So as the UI design, so what is the meaning of UI design? Now think about it in your Chrome extension. Is there any extension with a beautiful outlook? Very reveal, okay. Or if you find some beautiful outlook, then it basically launch a web page, right? So we call it UI design. It's very restrictive. What the web can give you, okay, is the extension capability. But how about Firefox? Firefox extension is crazy. You can create components, okay. Uh, how about the Firefox, okay, and, and uh, Chrome about the, uh, what is this guy, okay? This guy, I didn't say it now, later on I will, I will talk about it, okay? It's about single origin policy, okay, so what's mean a single origin policy? If you are having an app, let's say in a redhatcloud.com, okay, redhatcloud.com, can you fire an extension, um, sorry, XML HP request to department server, you know, because the common server didn't say something, okay? Then you will be blocked to your assessor. Now think about it in your assignment too. Your assignment too seems to be crazy. If you if you understand this is some restriction, and the restriction is saying that you are in size A, the script running in size A should not access the resource in size B. 
Now what is your assignment two? Your assignment two is you have a script in size eight, which is your, your application, and can control YouTube results. Why I say that you can control YouTube results? Because all your video player is actually an iframe. And this is a web page pointing to YouTube, a uh, uh, YouTube server. But YouTube server opens some uh, a thing for you, okay? But if we change something, okay, we don't rely on YouTube API. Actually, we can write a YouTube player extension. What is a YouTube player extension? <coughs> Take a look here. Hey, yeah. No, wait for wait for a few moments. Okay. So what is it? Uh, this is one of our. What, what is that? Two one one or two one <coughs> two one two one one term one. Okay. At that time, for uh, this course is going to term one, and they create another application. Let let me show it to you. Hey, come on, come on. It's very slow, huh? Okay, okay, okay. Come in, come in. Okay. So can you see this? Uh, it's install extension. When when extension is running, basically it's a uh, turn the page into a YouTube player. By that time, we don't have a the way to bypass the single origin principle and policy. So they need to run an extension. Okay. Why the extension allow you to do this? So extension is actually uh, very powerful. You can bypass the the DOM restriction over over the page, okay, basically uh, if you create a page, okay, and inside the iframe, the iframe assessing YouTube, you cannot change the content inside the YouTube page, okay, or you cannot uh, fire an XMLHP request to other sites, but with extensions you can do this, okay, because extension is just like a, just like the root account in the Linux, okay, it's a root account inside the browser, okay, how about file? Okay, uh, some partial local file, uh, I/O in a Chrome extension, and the file for extension is full. Okay, that's why I say that this, this guy is horrible. Uh, JavaScript in injection. So what is the meaning of JavaScript injection? It's not an attack. This is a feature. Okay, feature not an attack. You want to inject a file, a JavaScript file, so that you give extra extra feature to the page. So. What is what is that the, the thing that you, you first you first answer me? F block. F block. It's actually inject JavaScript into the page so that it uh, let's, let's say it find uh, some uh, uh, what is it? Flash flash pop in. Okay, it just closed out all the all the page uh, pointing to some flash. Okay, so it's just inject some uh, JavaScript to control a page. Okay, and this is very difficult in Chrome. And in Firefox, but in Chrome, it's very easy. Today we will talk. Uh, I, I don't think I have time to reach that mo this that, that location. Okay. So in a Chrome, uh, the extension is look like this. Okay. We basically we only talk about four components. Uh, there are more than four components. Okay. So we have the background. So as a background, there's a background page executing behind the screen. So what I'm talking about, let's take a look. Take a look at my browser. Okay, so let a look at my browser. Okay, so don't don't care about this. Okay, I want to show you. Uh, wheel, oh no, window. Uh, task manager. Okay, so this is task manager of my Chrome. Okay, let's take a look. So this this is a browser. You know what it is. This is a tab. You know what it is. Now, let's me. Look at it. Okay, so there are some extension hiding. Uh, no, no, this is not an extension. Ye? Ah, yeah, they they shut down all the extension page. Ah, here we have extension here running. Ah, that that guy is running in the background. Well, actually, I installed Evernote Evernote plugin. Okay, so it's Evernote plugin is running in the background silently. I don't know what it's doing. Okay, it's con consume me so many RAM. Okay. Uh, flash, okay. If I end a flash, okay, that's very interesting. Yeah, when I end a flash, what will happen? Eh? No, nothing happened. I didn't launch any flash page. Oh, it seems that uh, 
uh, there's very very few pages using flash now. So when I kill it, it's not, nothing changed. Okay. So there's basically a bunch of things hiding in the background and running using the background page. And there's a button. You already know what is a button, but in a Chrome extension API, is its name is called browser action. When you click on a browser action, it pops up something. We call it a pop up. Okay. Then if you want to inject some JavaScript code, that code is called content script. Okay, so this is just vocabularies. Just vocabularies. Let's take a brief note on what you can do. Okay, how many of you have installed the first app? Do you know what it is? No one knows? Okay, this guy. Okay, Google Mail Checker. How many of you have installed? No, because the Gmail is not important to you guys. Or when you look at your Gmail, it's 2000, right? 2000 and read, okay? But but not for me, right? I I forward all the all the uh, department mails to Gmail. So this guy is very important to me, okay? So think about it. What is this guy? This guy is actually uh, I show his capability first. First, it show me uh, how many mails I didn't read. So you can see this is one, two, and three there. So five mails I didn't read. Now if I close this guy. Okay, close the Gmail, I press this button. Yeah, it's just open Gmail. <laughs> okay, it seems to be stupid, right? But how about its implementation? Okay, it's a button, right? Call browser action. Okay, it also has a background script. Okay, the background script is actually doing one very interesting thing. I know, I don't know about this. Okay, after, only after I reverse engineer the code of this application. Okay, later I tell you how to reverse engineer, it's very simple. Okay, I reverse, reverse engineer, then I find that actually every Gmail account has this RSSP. No one knows. Yeah? So it's an atom. Yeah, it's atom. Look at that. So this is my feed. Okay, yeah, don't, don't think that you can always access to my feed, huh? You can only access to your own face or the account that you log in. Okay, so basically that app is actually actually looking into this list and count how many emails that I didn't read. Okay, so as simple as that. Second, uh, second is very powerful. Okay, what is a powerful thing? A last year project. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so this last year project are done by three guys. Okay, you don't need to hear about the sound. I find a right moment to pause it. Okay, yeah, this is the right moment. Okay, zoom in. Can you see what it is? Just like just like a phone, right? The phone had a balloon. They put it into the web and found it. Create create an extension. Create a Chrome extension, and Chrome extension inject JavaScript code in every page that it is it's loading. Then you will you will be able to create those bubbles, right? Because just just create the idea and put it there, okay? And they can also be capable to yeah send me actually they want to send me a message during the demonstration, okay? Uh, this is not not that simple. Their project is uh, is more than that. Their project is uh, including send file. I remember, yeah, they they try to do something horrible. Can you see this logo? Okay, they want to integrate a Facebook chat with a Google Drive. Okay, if you send a send a things, okay, you can select whether to send to the Facebook uh, API and send to your message uh, dialog box or send to Google Drive. Okay. Well, because of why why is possible? Don't don't think that oh wow is powerful. No, because the limitation of of a Chrome extension doesn't exist. Okay, I would say this is a nothing is impossible in in a Chrome extension as long as you have the time to write it. Okay, so this is a, a another example. Okay, one of the examples that you think that is a very horrible. How many of you have used a extension called Remote Desktop? Inside the Chrome, you can open remote desktop to access another Windows machine. 
Yeah. How about the SSH client? No, no one has used the SSH client. Do you know that there is a, a Python Python interpreter? No. You guys don't use computers. <laughs> yeah. Extension. I, I I I forget whether I remove it or I disable it. Python. Yeah, the Python shell. Enable that. Yeah. Yeah, I can choose a Python. Okay. Print. Haha. Yeah. Yeah, you can type over using extension. Crazy? No, that's not crazy. Equalizer. You have equalizer running in the background. Okay. So it seems to be uh, that the limitation is uh, infinite, right? You cannot limit it okay, as long as uh, you have a creativity as well as uh, programming capability. Okay. So how to write it? Yeah, let's start with uh, simple examples. Okay. Not very difficult. Very easy because they are all JavaScript. All JavaScript. So let's start with Hello World. So uh, by the way, if you have a laptop, are you ready? Okay. If you're ready, uh, you can go to the page. Uh, where is my browser? Here. Okay. So you can go to our uh, example page. Click on it. You will download a zip file. You will download a zip file. And after you download a zip file, actually the zip file is containing such a directory. Okay, this is a set of examples that I want to share with you. Okay, so why I want you to download and extract it first because if you want to experience how to implement, okay, first you have to uh, keep all the codes within the directory. Then if you want to run an example, so you you have to go to the extent extension page, load it, okay, and find the directory that I just shared with you. Let's say about a hollow world directory. So there are a set of codes. You see three files in there. One is a PNG, one is a configuration in terms of a JavaScript object. Last is the J the JS file called background, the background script running in the background. Okay? So when you select it, then you it will uh, execute. Okay. Now what is that? What is that? Let's take a very brief look at it. Okay. By the way, if you want to look at uh, what are the other extensions you have in your computer, very simple. Because it's by default it's open source, you can CD to that directory. Okay. I'm only using a uh, Windows. Okay. Using Windows, so go to that that Windows and uh, change the username to your username. Okay. If for Mac, you can go to your uh, no use it. Use another terminal. So go to the library, application, oh, application support, Google, Google, Chrome, and there is a bunch of directory. Go to the default directory, extensions. Okay. So you see a bunch of uh, I don't know what it is. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Go back to the browser. Can you see this? Okay, this see this guys are uh, okay. Let's say uh, the the equalizer. Okay, I can copy and the CD into it. Then I'm inside the extension writing about the code about the equalizer. Okay, now how to look into the code? Very simple. First of all, uh, we go with our our example first. Okay. So I go to the sublime. Okay, so this is the Hollow World example. So there are three files. One is a configuration. Later on, we'll talk about configuration because configuration is too easy. Yeah. Let's go to code. Ah, oh, very ugly. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, so I move down a bit so you can see it, right? Now look at that. Simple applications with a very simple functions. And a simple function will do the following. The behavior is when I click on this button, 
it say that hello zero click on it again this is how one okay so what is the code here the code here is actually calling this function the callback okay this is a registration of the callback and when you want to register it just write this line of code from browser action on click and listen up what are the things that I want to illustrate to you I want to illustrate that the background the background script is actually run, really running in the background. The meaning is, look at this global variable. The global variable starts with the count equals zero. When I click on the button here, it becomes two, becomes three. And what is the meaning? The meaning is very straightforward. That guy won't go away. Okay? When you load into the memory, it's just there running kind of like forever until you close the browser. Okay? So, <laughs> very simple and straightforward. That means that if you're writing, a, I, I always think of writing this thing, okay? Let's say that I want to have browser to do a BB <coughs> client. Can I do this? Okay? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. It depends on how many variables or global status you can save inside the backend or the background.js. Okay, so it's background. Oh, by the way, the, the, the file name here is not correct. <coughs> okay, and this is about the sublime. The sublime needs to uh, double click it. Okay, then it pop up. <laughs> yeah, this is the true name. Background JS. Huh? Okay, so let's take a brief look at how to configure uh, application. Of course, you need to have a directory. Point out at least these two guys. This is optional because it's a browser, browser actions icon. Okay. Yeah, you can change it in the other icon. Don't use my face, huh? Yeah. yeah. You guys not to use my face. Very ugly. Yeah. I mean, make your app very ugly, okay? Not my face very ugly, yeah? Okay, so configuration. The JSON file. Uh, since I don't have a brief introduction over JSON, then you can think of it as a as a sum of the formats to define an object, okay? So what you need is uh, some very important things, like uh, what it's a file name to your background, okay, to your background script, and I name it as a background.js, okay. I name my browser action icon to this, so they are, it's kind of important, okay. So others like a description that you can say whatever things you want, okay. The version one point zero, you can call it ten point ten, okay, no problem, okay. After this, I already say that about this guy. Okay, about the lifetime of this global variable. Of course, this is a function call. So if you are putting any local variable in there, the lifetime is only a start when the callback is being triggered, when when the end of the callback is uh, reached. Now, one of the problem, I write down the console log there, right? Now, uh, uh, by the way, how many of you never call console log? Okay, yeah, everybody has called it good. Okay, then you know console log. Then in example here, where I fire that log message. Ah, that's important, right? There. Okay, so let's see. I press here, so I have a message, but I also write down console.log, whether it is inside here. No. Nope. It is clean. Nothing. It seems that it is not in the page. Now this is another concept. Browse selection background, one of the things I just said is actually a separate world from the page you are currently loading. When you load a page and the page has its own world, browse selection has its own world, and the browse selection is actually calling this background.js, right? I call this background.js. So the world should belong to the background. Okay? So here, uh, here, it, you allow it to inspect wheels called background page. When I click on it, can you see this? This is the background page loading in the background. Whenever you have console.log, just fire. It is inside the background in, uh, environment. It's not in the page that you know or whatever page is. It's just like here's a uh, there is a home place to store all the log messages. Okay, so this is the beginning 
Okay, if you're impatient, you can uh, go to take a look at uh, other examples. So I can give you a preview. The next example is about uh, using pop-up. Okay, pop-up is short life. Later I will tell you why it is short life. Then we will create some uh, numbers inside the browser actions. And the application is very funny. Okay, I want to inspect how many times you go to Facebook. Whenever you go to Facebook, that count will increase by one. Okay? I want to count how many. So how to implement that? Then you, you need some more technique. You want to look at the tapes, right? Here is a good starting point. How to process tapes. Okay? Then how about injecting square inside Facebook? Wow, powerful, huh? Uh, whenever you see you see more 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 pages, okay, or posts, okay, you change it into another name. Wow, it's very powerful, huh? So we can do it, okay? But our example is like this. Our example is uh, why I cannot close this guy. The the button where is the button? Okay, so I load this core detect people, okay? So what is it about? When I go to Facebook. I just do some some uh, non non intro. Oh, it's, it's Leon. Okay, so uh, I just highlight the uh, highlight the something that I'm interested in. Okay, I highlight some of the news feed. Okay, yeah. Oh, why? <laughs> okay, I don't know why. Okay, yeah, because my keyword is Chan. Okay, the surname Chan. I don't know why. Why this guy is not called Chan? Is it no? <laughs> is any any people chain like this? No. Why is why is highlight chain here? Huh? Any others? Ah, uh, here. Wow. Ah, uh, this guy we have chance this time we have chain. Okay. I don't know her. Okay. A uh, change. Ah, uh, yeah, change also. Uh, is a is it because of change? No. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> My record is better. Yeah, I, my 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 expression, expression is not good enough. Okay? I, I, I don't tell him, huh? <laughs> okay, so I will share all the techniques uh, next time. Next time we will mix Monday. Okay, tomorrow we have a project discussion, right? Okay.